All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Nikita Shamgunov. I'm the CTO of MemSQL. Um, and today the topic is PowerStream, propelling energy innovation with predictive analytics. Uh, MemSQL is a distributed uh, in-memory database, and PowerStream is an application that's built on top of MemSQL with Spark. So here are the topics today, renewable energy, uh, and why renewable energy is a hot topic uh, in general, and why renewable energy is a hot topic for uh, everybody who is interested in data processing. Uh, then we'll jump into PowerStream, the, this application, um, and most of the time we'll spend uh, playing with PowerStream and showing the demo, showing MemSQL and Spark working together. Uh, hopefully we'll also have some time for Q&As. All right. right, so here's renewable energy in the news. Um, Germany just got almost all its energy uh, from renewable sources. So that's really cool, and that, that was an article in May 15, uh, 2016. Uh, here's another big number. Uh, investment in renewables reached $286 billion worldwide in 2015. That's a massive number, right? The world is moving towards renewable energy. Um, so now I want to introduce PowerStream. Um, so what is PowerStream? It's, it's an application that is predicting uh, the global health of wind turbines. Um, so there are about 200,000 uh, wind turbines uh, around the world, and each turbine uh, streams uh, its data. Um, you know, there's a bunch of sensors and turbines, and they produce a lot of data. Well, how much data they produce? They produce uh, one to two million data points per second uh, globally. So now, um, if you want to predict uh, the health of wind turbines, uh, you need to learn from that data. Um, and luckily we have Spark and MLlib, we can uh, build uh, uh, predictive models using that technology. Uh, but you also need to just kind of cope with this amount of data. Uh, it's, it's flowing, it's dynamic, uh, and you need to be able to capture and process it in real time. Um, when you think about the, the type of uh, hardware uh, you need to have to process this amount of data, it's actually not th uh, that much. With modern technology, uh, with Spark and MemSQL, you only need seven machines on AWS, which would roughly cost you, you know, twenty thousand dollars a year. Uh, for everybody who is, in, you know, from the enterprise, that's not a very big number, especially handling such a massive uh, data processing task. So this is the uh, uh, the, the architecture of PowerStream. Um, Data uh, is produced uh, by wind turbines, by, uh, particularly by sensors and wind turbines. And this is basically integers and doubles and uh, whatever sensors might emit. Um, that data is collected and pushed into Kafka. Uh, everybody's familiar with Kafka? Yes? Great. Um, yeah, so once the data is in Kafka, um, we're moving that data into MemSQL uh, using the application, we're using part of MemSQL, it's called Streamliner. Streamliner allows you to subscribe to a Kafka topic. Um, it happens in the UI. It happens basically with, with one-click type experience. Um, and then uh, you can perform basically ETL, extract, transform, and load jobs for data streaming uh, to you from Kafka. Um, so once the data is in MemSQL, um, which you, you know, process uh, in, in Streamliner, you can do very, uh, uh, a lot of interesting things. Uh, and one, the, the first thing that comes to mind is building applications on top of that data. So data is live, the uh, data is streaming, um, and since MemSQL is a database, you can build an application, here's an example, uh, using Mapbox, which is uh, uh, um, a mapping application. You can embed it in your browser, has an API, and you can build very, very dynamic uh, applications. I will show it to you um, in a moment. So you can zoom in uh, with PowerStream. You see individual turbines, um, and then you can see all the kind of the, the values of those um, sensors that are happening. So we're going to switch to a demo very quickly um, uh, in a moment. Uh, the part one of the demo just demonstrates the ingest. So I'm going to show you a live system that is processing one to two million data points a second. Um, the other part of, demo, of the demo is actually doing predictive analytics by scoring that data that's incoming to us in real time. And then we're gonna show how we can do BI, business intelligence 
on top of that data uh, attaching BI tools. Um, so we'll show some Tableau uh, in action working on top of MemSQL. Um, all right, so, so let's, let's zoom in a little bit. Like, what happens? Um, here, uh, highlighted uh, in white, uh, we're collecting data. So we're collecting data and pushing it into Kafka. So Kafka is a great piece of technology. Uh, it enables real time. Um, so it, it's a well understood thing. So now the more interesting uh, stuff happens in uh, Streamliner. So we have, uh, uh, once we've collected enough data, we can start producing models. And you can use Spark ML Lib uh, to, uh, to produce those models. The good news is that MemSQL provides a Spark connector, which allows you to transfer data uh, very smoothly between uh, MemSQL and Spark RDDs. Uh, it goes, uh, since MemSQL is a distributed uh, database, and Spark is also a distributed system, so we are moving data uh, from each node in one cluster to each node in, the, in another cluster. So it's, an, it's a very, very efficient operation. So uh, now data is in, in Spark and MLLib, you produce predictive models, um, and then you can push those predictive models into Streamline and to start scoring data that, that is uh, moving into the system in real time. Um, and we do it basically time and again. Uh, here we're going to demonstrate it uh, uh, to you with uh, PowerStream, but we, uh, also a good number of our customers are doing the same thing, collecting IoT data, scoring it, um, and push it that, uh, pushing that data into MemSQL, attaching BI tools, building applications, building alerts, uh, building all sorts of sophisticated logic to the data that, that is flowing into the system in real time. Um, all right, so in this particular case, we're going to just classify um, the types of potential failures uh, for wind turbines. So we'll be predicting uh, which turbines are going to be failing and how particular wind turbines are going to be failing, which it, you can imagine is extremely important because the cost of a turbine not working is very, very high. You're losing a lot of money by, uh, by having a broken turbine. Here we can say, okay, well, this turbine is about to fail. This is going to be the particular type of failure, so we can deploy uh, uh, a workforce uh, to, to fix the problem. Finally, um, once the data is MemSQL, is, uh, in MemSQL, it's extremely available, right? You can connect to MemSQL. In fact, we're, um, we'll let you connect using MySQL driver, uh, but you can also uh, attach BI tools such as Tableau to get all sorts of visualization on top of the data. And so you can kind of clearly see, all oh, right, so these are the turbines that are about to fail well, with this particular type of failure. All right, so uh, let's switch to the demo. So this is PowerStream, uh, and this is PowerStream Live. Here uh, we're showing um, how many records a second we're processing. And uh, each data point actually updates, um, sends an update into the system. Uh, and it sets, uh, you know, uh, particular columns in the in the turbines uh, table to um, to a value, and then we know if the, the turbine is about to fail or not. Um, this is the cluster. Uh, oh, we, here we can move uh, the map um, and guess which country has the most uh, wind turbines. Denmark. Denmark. Okay, let's find out. Who knows where is Denmark? Uh, okay, <laughs> that's right. Well, well, so this is actual information. The, um, the sensor values um, that are flowing into the system are simulated, but the, the turbine location uh, uh, locations are accurate. And then you can see there's nothing in Russia. That's my home country. Um, yeah, there's just nothing there. Uh, but if you look at Denmark, uh, and that must be somewhere here, um, you, you can certainly see that there's you know, large saturation um, uh, of, of turbines here. So you can zoom in, and as you get closer, I'm double clicking here. Yeah, they, they turn into individual turbines. All right. So, uh, okay, enough visualization um, in PowerStream. What's interesting is, um, I'll zoom back out. They can start um, uh, a simulation 
here and go to the control panel and then start fast deterioration. Um, and then live, you'll be seeing uh, that some uh, turbines are going to be turning red. Right. Okay, I'm starting to see notifications. Well, here's a turbine turning red. Here's another one turning red. Here's another one turning yellow. Um, and those wind farms are turning yellow or red depending on the number uh, of wind turbines in trouble. Uh, and, but the best news is this is the information you're getting live processing millions of data points a second. So it's an extremely powerful system. Okay, um, so, uh, so here's the cluster. Um, uh, this is uh, called MemSQL Ops, which is an uh, operational uh, uh, panel that shows how MemSQL is, is running. You know, are you, do you have enough CPU? Do you have enough memory? What's the network bandwidth um, uh, and whatnot? And so here you can see all the CPUs kind of dancing. That shows that the system is busy. And the system is busy processing all these data points and, and running um, updates uh, into the system. If you click to on, on data sources and go into Streamliner, you'll see that uh, you know, there are two pipelines here. So one uh, is the pipeline that is scoring, um, and it's uh, you know, pushing a lot of data through. Um, and the other pipeline is alerts. And I mean, it's not that busy, actually. I mean, it's only processing you know, 500 rows a second or so. Within that pipeline, and I'm going to click the um, Edit button, uh, you see that there's a Kafka here, Kafka data source. Um, and uh, there's the IP address for the uh, Zookeeper quorum. Um, and then there is a transform. And um, our transform uh, is called, it's written in Scala, but in fact, you can write uh, your transform um, in Python, for example. And uh, when they're in Python, you'll be able to edit the code right here in the, in the window. Um, this is the class, and you can change the jar that has the definition of this class. Um, uh, the implementation is pretty straightforward. Uh, it applies the machine learning model for each record that is coming in uh, from, uh, uh, from Kafka through Spark Streaming. And then we push this data into a uh, database name memturbine, table name sensors, and we are on duplicate key behavior, we replace. It's right here. So which means that every data point updates the value associated with a particular wind turbine. Instead of just hoarding that data, um, we are, uh, we're updating uh, that information for each wind turbine. So now if we go back, yeah, everything's pretty much red here. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of cool. Now, what, another thing that you can do is you can attach Tableau and see the same information through Tableau. So everybody's familiar with Tableau? Yeah, Tableau is a BI tool and it's great. Um, and uh, what, what really great is great about Tableau, it kind of democratizes access to data, right? Um, you can point Tableau at the, at the database and then see beautiful visualizations and then share them within your uh, organization. So here, basically, it's the same stuff, right, uh, that PowerStream is showing, but anybody can build this application. Right? You, all you need to do is to uh, use Tableau and attach it. So everybody is, is red, so this is our live view. Um, so um, I would assume if I hit the refresh button in Tableau, I will see more red data points. So, uh, when it's going through Tableau, it's slower, but it, it's, it's not an uh, MMSQL problem, it's a Tableau problem. It's pulling all these data points back. Okay, yeah, everything is red. All right, and when you hover over, you, you see all the, um, uh, all the values, all the sensor values that are coming in into the database, which is kind of very, very convenient. Okay, so let's uh, uh, switch back to the slide deck. So MemSQL and Spark, um, there is a lot of kind of synergy uh, between the two technologies, right? MemSQL focuses on speed, on storage, uh, on, s on managing state, uh, on being able to update that state, on running sophisticated uh, uh, SQL queries. Um, and, Sp and Spark, and everybody is, you know, obviously it's a Spark conference, everybody's familiar with what Spark is. 
but the, the truth is that those two technologies work really, really well uh, together. Um, and this synergy is uh, kind of delivered to the world uh, through Spark Connector and also is delivered to the world through the Streamliner application where you can create your own uh, data pipelines. And it's super easy and, and super performant. So when you are inside the Streamliner, uh, within that transform that I showed you, you can actually run SQL commands and send them against MemSQL, or you can send them through Spark SQL. And when you send them through Spark SQL, you can enable pushdown. And uh, pushdown is the way to completely delegate the part of the SQL query that queries MemSQL tables to MemSQL. So we can push down not just filters, we can pu push down joins, we can push down aggregations, we can push down group buys. Um, however, at the same time, you can still join data that is stored in MemSQL with data that is stored elsewhere, for example, in Hadoop. And that's how um, a lot of our customers leverage uh, MemSQL and, and, and code written in Spark, both for completely real-time applications that completely push down uh, a SQL execution into MemSQL, and now it's highly concurrent um, and super fast. Uh, but also, they have overnight batch processing uh, and then run uh, Spark SQL in Spark without pushing it down into MemSQL. So, um, you know, why would you uh, enable SQL pushdown? Well, uh, uh, MemSQL is, is a completely real-time system, right? When you send uh, SQL uh, into MemSQL, uh, it's, it's processed live. Um, it does not create a job, for example, so there's kind of no job management there. So um, it's, it, it responds in certain cases on the millisecond level uh, latency, right? When you do, for example, a key value lookup uh, in MemSQL, you get sub millisecond uh, response time. Um, it delivers on great concurrency, right? Because uh, it's not a job system, right? It's not a, you know, we're not creating jobs for running SQL. Uh, we can deliver up to millions of concurrent queries. And that's what I was showing you with the PowerStream application. Um, but it's also kind of complements Spark capabilities. It gives you storage. So now you can do data processing in Spark, do sophisticated things like machine learning, and the result of that, you can just persist uh, in MemSQL. Um, the, the big use case here is you can uh, continue using Spark as a high-level interface to all your data. Um, but then if certain things need to um, have storage, if certain things you need to accelerate, either in terms of uh, query execution or concurrency, you can push that thing down into MemSQL. Uh, all right, so uh, let's look at pushdown. So here, and um, I have uh, Spark Shell running, right? Um, and I have a query. So this query is, again, uh, is running against the same data um, that, that uh, PowerStream is processing. And here's the definition of that query. So we're just selecting a turbine ID and uh, uh, have uh, kind of two subselects here. And we're joining on a, a pretty complex condition, right? So it's not an equality join. Uh, it's a join on, it's a, uh, on the distance, um, right? If the status on one row is within a particular distance of the other side of the join. Um, and now I'm going to use a little bit of a cheat sheet here. Um, I'm going to show you explain plans for that query. So if you don't use uh, pushdown, the explain plan um, is going to like, uh, look like this. And I think what kind of particularly kills this query is this Cartesian product. Um, and that's uh, um, how Spark would, uh, would run uh, this particular query. But now, um, if you look at the explain plan uh, with uh, pushdown, and in order to enable pushdown, you just need to run it against uh, an MemSQL context. Um, so you will see that the top operator on the physical plan is uh, MemSQL physical RDD, which just shows you that we're pushing down the whole SQL execution here um, and delegating into MemSQL. So now let's, do, um, let's see how long it takes to run it. So um, now I'm running this query with MemSQL, uh, and you know it, it takes a little bit of time. 
Uh, but yet the result is coming back in a few seconds. And I think if I run on the, the next time, it might be a little faster, mm, about the same. So something on the order of two, three seconds. Now, if I run the same query um, without MemSQL, this is what we're going to have. Copy, paste, work. So now we started to, uh, to run kind of a complex uh, batch job. Um, and if, you know, if I leave it right here, um, maybe in half an hour it will finish, right? Uh, and the reason to that is uh, MemSQL invested like immense amount of effort into query processing and query execution for SQL. So uh, we are experts in SQL and we know how to run SQL uh, the best way possible. On top of it, MemSQL has indexes and uh, this is something that you can uh, uh, really leverage in certain cases for query processing. Um, but MemSQL has a, a very sophisticated query optimizer, uh, very, uh, uh, very efficient implementation uh, for query execution, and a few other cool tricks which, I, which I'm about to show you um, as well. So I'm not going to wait uh, for this to finish. I'm going to just terminate this, um, this part. And before I do that, I want to capture that query. So, okay. So I'm just going to control C this. So let's connect to MemSQL. Oh, I guess I need another. Uh, in order to connect to MemSQL, you just need to use uh, your Okay, show databases. So it looks like MySQL, but it's not MySQL. For example, I can say show leaves, and you will see all, this, uh, uh, all the eight leaves that we have on the cluster. So back to show databases, uh, and let's go use MemTurbine. Um, and then I'm going to show the explain plan for the same query uh, in MemSQL. I will need to make it a little smaller for that to format nicely. So this is a distributed plan. Um, the, the, the interesting thing that it starts with an index scan, right? So the fact that we have wind farm less than 100, we're really taking advantage of that one. Um, and then uh, here, uh, uh, we're running this in parallel, and then we gather, and there's in the gather operator that's pulled, it, pulled all, uh, all this data um, into what we call an aggregator or leader node. Um, and we do a similar thing for the other side of the join. And then within that, uh, we're performing a nested loop join, and, uh, which means that for every record in, on one table, we're looking up that record into the other table according to the predicate of the condition on the join. A um, few other cool things. MemSQL actually generates code uh, for each individual query. So um, internally, uh, we have a language that's called MPL, MemSQL Programming Language, um, which is uh, you know, a high-level language that we can convert to bytecode. And uh, I can show the bytecode, MBC. Uh, this bytecode kind of starting to look a little bit like assembly language, uh, but it's still pretty high level. Um, that bytecode I can convert to uh, LLVM. How, who's familiar with LLVM? A few people. Uh, yeah, so LLVM is, uh, um, is basically part of the compiler infrastructure uh, created by Apple, but now it's a, it's a nonprofit. Um, so LLVM allows you to generate code uh, in, in a low-level language, but still not as low-level as assembly. So it does not have, uh, it's not hardware-aware just yet. But you can use that LLVM library to convert this code into assembly. And in fact, I can demonstrate it here as well. So we're converting this query that I just showed you all the way down to assembly code, and then executing that assembly code in the most efficient way possible uh, using a cluster environment. And that's why, you know, the query execution is so fast. So, uh, pardon my geeking out a little bit here. Um, 
OK, so here's the bottom line. Uh, we have power stream, and it uh, allows you to uh, use memsql, uh, use spark, uh, use them together uh, to go from a real-time dashboard, which people used to do in the past, to uh, predictive ap applications and predictive analytics. And that's what people really care about, right? It's really important for the business to not lose time um, and not lose dollars when uh, uh, those wind turbines are stalling and not working.